Imagine standing on a four inch piece of wood over a meter off the ground. In front of hundreds of people, a panel of judges scrutinizing your every move. You're expected to do a backflip and land it. How do you focus? How do you keep from freaking out? I used to get asked this question a lot. But when you stand there preparing for a skill, the distractions fade into the background. Instead, you think, stand tall. Are my arms in the right place? Am I swinging them at the right angle? Push through my toes, jump, look for the landing, and stick. It's the epitome of mindfulness. You can't successfully complete a skill if you don't break it down and hyper-focus on the details. A backflip is not one thing, but a series of actions coming together to create a whole. In the same way, if you can't be focused moment by moment, how do you expect to do it in your life as a whole? Life, like gymnastics, is about keeping your balance. So today, I'm going to talk about some ways to help you stay on your feet. There are two sides to every story. Gymnastics is founded in the interplay between powerful movement and complete stillness. It's running full speed towards a stationary object, and it's holding a handstand like it's the most natural orientation of the human body. For some of you, this might mean throwing yourself headfirst into career or school, but it also means knowing when to step back and look after yourself. These juxtapositions come together in life and in sport, but either way, this is a lot to swallow as a kid. I started gymnastics when I was two years old. My parents put me in the sport because I had so much energy, I never sat still. When I was six, I got invited to the competitive program. By the time I was nine, I started leaving school early so I could train. By the time I was 11 years old, I was in the gym 28 hours a week. Gymnastics took precedence over birthday parties, family vacations, and school events. My parents drove me to training five days a week, and when I was old enough, I would go in and coach on my days off. I'm sure, as a parent, it was difficult. How are they supposed to know that putting their hyperactive two-year-old in a sport had locked them in for 14 years of practices until 9 p.m. and MRI appointments at 3 a.m.? Growing up as an elite athlete gives you a skewed version of reality. I thought six-packs were a normal part of human anatomy until I was 10. Now, people say that gymnastics is not relevant, but, you know, the backflip, it's a metaphor. <laughs> so, I started the sport when I was very young, and I grew up in this world. People become gymnasts before they know they want to become gymnasts. You give an athlete the tools to be able to do the sport before they actually know they want to, and then in eight or 10 years, they might even like it. This is where that focus comes in. How do you decide that you want to do something? How do you decide that you want to put everything into it? You don't get to choose the hand that you're dealt in life, but you can pick the best card you've got, and you can give it everything you've got. And for me, that card was gymnastics. So that's the world I grew up in. Hard work, I learned so much. I found myself, or so I thought. I retired from gymnastics when I was 16. And I was pretty sure everything was going to be really easy after that. I would be at school. I would have a social life. I could hang out with my friends. Instead, I was a mess. I lost my shoes. I lost my wallet. I lost my keys. I forgot dentist appointments and assignment due dates. Without a training schedule, I wasn't even sure what day it was most of the time. That's because I had lost focus. I also realized that regular people can't just consume 4,000 calories a day, and that sucks. What was I supposed to do? when everything that I was, was gone. In our lives, there's a thousand things pulling us a million different directions. 
social media, school, career, it feels like too much and also not enough. I was pretty sure that I had it all figured out when I was younger. But as I grew up, I understood less and less about what was going on. This is because I was imbalanced. Gymnastics had forced me to focus without me even realizing it. But when it came to my own decisions, I didn't have goals. I was just floating through every day with no direction. I had to be able to find that focus on my own. And therein lies the issue. What is that gymnast drive? And how do you find it? Let me tell you a story. There was one year when I was about 12 that my heel was so sore I found it painful to walk. Everyone told me that it was probably just a bruise. So I sucked it up and I limped around for a couple months. Eventually, my mom decided something was actually wrong. So she took me to a sports doctor. The doctor sent me to get an MRI and then I was back in the doctor's office and being told off for having trained on a fractured heel for months. I sat there on the crinkly white table of the doctor's office, swinging my feet back and forth. My mom was standing there in the corner, staring at me silently. Her face said, I cannot believe I let my 12-year-old daughter run around on a broken heel for two months. I looked to the doctor straight in the face and said, I'm supposed to fly to a competition in Montreal in two days. If I promise to take the rest of the season off, can I still compete this weekend? This is a ridiculous question. Obviously, when you find out that you have a stress fracture running through your heel like a ticking time bomb, you get yourself some crutches. You sit your butt down and you take what is clearly a much needed break. Nevertheless, I got the okay to compete. That competition hurt like hell. Every step I took was in the direction of a split heel. But I made it through. And I didn't just survive that competition either. I won. That was a first place medal I was truly proud of. For better or for worse, I knew there was always a way to push through the pain. Now pushing through the pain doesn't need to mean running around on a broken foot. Only crazy people do things like that. But I want you to picture your biggest thing. Picture your hardest challenge. The thing that you're not so sure you can do. Now I want you to change that in your mind right now. It is your biggest thing. It is your hardest challenge and it is absolutely something you can accomplish. Decide that. The next step is finding the tools to be able to focus on that goal. And there are a couple things I've learned in gymnastics that have helped me along the way. First, start good habits. It's not a big deal if one time in training you start one cartwheel with a bit of a slouch. But if your coach catches you, they are still going to scream. Because one slouchy cartwheel turns into another. And the next thing you know, you've started a habit that's really hard to break. Whereas if you put effort into starting properly, then in competition, under pressure, your body does it automatically. This is the same for being on your phone during lectures, hitting snooze four times on your alarm every morning, or buying food every single time you go out. Repetition leads to actual physical changes in the brain that make us more efficient at doing that thing. Whether it's sticking the landing or smiling more. We say that practice makes perfect. So you actually have to practice being the kind of person that you want to be. Second, be resilient. Nothing is ever good the first time. We see those gold medal bar routines at the Olympics the same way we only see the success of our friends and family on Facebook and Instagram. Very rarely do we see the failures of others, and that can make it hard to face our own struggles. The truth is, you will fall repeatedly, but reframe this as an opportunity to get up and try again. 
I have fallen on my bum, my back, my knees, my face, pretty much any way that you can picture a human body hitting the ground, I've done it. And eventually, you do get that perfect landing. But the bad news is, even once you're there, you're still going to mess up sometimes. <sighs> the thing is, you have to keep trying and get up and do it again. One of the most humbling experiences of my gymnastics career was at a gym meet in Chicago. Now, by this point, I had been competing for years. I was at a national level. I was next to go on the beam and feeling good. My warm-up had been solid. I was confident that I could stick my aerials, my back handspring series, and my dismount. So I get to actually competing. And I've been on the beam for about 10 seconds when I trip myself, walking backwards, and fall. Sometimes we find balance in our failures. I went on and on about winning big, even with an injury. But I still have to admit that I fell at a national competition, not doing a skill, but walking. The next time something isn't going your way, see it as an opportunity to be mentally tough. One bad day, one bad competition, one bad exam might seem like a big deal in the moment, but it's only a problem if you let that mistake become a habit. It took me some time to realize that the skills I had as a gymnast could teach me about what I could be doing differently in the rest of my life. For me, it was about finding things that forced me to focus. When you're scared, when what you're doing is hard, when you're doing what you love, that's when your brain starts paying attention. Whether it's friends and school, work and play, physical and mental health, with balance comes success. I'm not saying go learn to do a backflip, but rather find the thing that makes you feel like you've already done it. After all, life is a balance beam. So stand tall. Make sure that your arms are in the right place and jump. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>